Hello, the newly released Bunny Mod XT includes an in-game interactive editor for Half-Life Tasses. This editor makes it much much easier and quicker to create Half-Life Tasses compared to what you used to do before. In this video I would like to give an introduction to the editor and show how you can create your own Tasses using it. So let's say you want to create a TAS of a KZ map, uh, BKZ called BHOP in this case, and you want to use the Half-Life KZ settings, uh, that is SV max speed 300 and uh, BXT BHOP cap 0, and you want to use 250 FPS. So how do you actually start the TAS? Uh, well, before we do that, uh, I want to show you the important BXT TAS editor command. It's used to enable or disable the editor. Uh, it has two modes, append mode and edit mode. I will show both of them later. Uh, for now, I just want you to bind all three of these to three different keys because you will be switching between them a lot. So how do you actually create a new task? Well, now there is a convenient command, ext test new. If you exec it with, without arguments, then it will tell you everything you need to pass it. Uh, but it is the file name of the new script, it is the map starting command and the FPS for the test. Uh, in our case, let's call the file goldbhop. The starting command, since we want to start from the map beginning, we want to just use map bkz goldbhop. Uh, this is the same command that you would use to just load the map normally. And the FPS we want to use 250 as per the Half-Life KZ rules. So if we run this command and I look in the console, it says new task has been created successfully. Use this bind for launching it. Now if we go into Steam Apps, common Half-Life, we can you we can see that it has created a file called goldbhop.hltas. And uh, if we open it, we can see that it's filled with some uh, starting commands, as well as comments explaining what they do. But uh, we don't actually need to edit this by hand with the task editor. So uh, let's just copy this bind that it printed, uh, paste it, and I will press the slash button. So now I spawned in the map, paused, but I can actually free cam. Uh, it works similar to no clip, but it's only the camera that is moved, not the player. And you can see that there is a line. So this line is the predicted player position, uh, the predicted player movement. And as I move the mouse around, I can control the direction that the player will move and the number of frames that the player will move for. Uh, and you can see that sometimes this line becomes red. Uh, the line becomes red uh, when it collides with something. So, for example, if you bump into a wall, the line will become red. This helps you avoid collisions with walls and uh, other things. So, uh, let's strafe around this booster. Uh, let's pick a tight angle that just barely goes around it. And press the right mouse button. This creates a point. And all this gray segment, this whole gray segment before the point is now not changed. So, and we can control the next segment. We can set a different angle for it and uh, we can add more points. So let's say I will add a point over there and I will add another point. Uh, you can see I got a jump off of the block. So this is the append mode. The append mode is where you add new points in the end. Let's now switch to the edit mode by e executing BXT test editor 2. So right here you can see my FPS suddenly improved because the because Bunny Mod XT does not have to predict the whole path again. And in this mode I can select I can mouse over different points and I can change them. So if I drag the mouse with left mouse button pressed uh, like this, you can see that I change the duration. So I can make this uh, I can make this segment last longer, or I can make it last less. Uh, and if I use the right mouse button, I can change the angle. So the blue line represents the angle, and by right mouse button dragging, I can change it. 
So let's see what the rest of our test looks like. Uh, you can see that if I change the angle to too much to the right, I fall into the pit. So let's not fall into the pit like this. And uh, let's extend this path a little further. Uh, so to run the test, you can just press the bind, press the running bind again, or uh, you can manually do bxe test editor save. Uh, and if you look back into the file, you can see that it added commands corresponding to the segments that we added. So let's now press the running bind. And you can see that it did, it move, the player moved according to what we just did. Uh, so let's see some other helpful things that you can do in the test editor. Uh, let's add a couple more points like this. And one more that curves to the right. And let's adjust so we actually get the jump off of the next block, like so. So, uh, well, first of all, uh, you must remember that the prediction is not perfect, is not 100% accurate. It's pretty accurate, but as uh, if you go for longer periods of time, or if you interact with any entities, which the prediction can't predict, then the test uh, can desync from this path. So it is important to simulate the path to a certain point every now and then, so that the edited segment of the path uh, remains short. Uh, there is a command for that. It's called ext test editor set run point and save. So if you execute this command in edit mode while pointing at a particular point, uh, the test will now run up to that point and you will continue editing past that point. So let me run the test. You can see that it ran to that point that I had selected. And now I can continue editing past that. So you want to make, you want to do this frequently to avoid the sinks. Uh, now you can actually change several properties of the subline segments uh, without leaving the test editor. So there's a number of commands for that. Uh, one important command is bxt test bxt test editor toggle. And this allows you to toggle a whole range of different things on this segment. So for example, I can toggle between auto jump and duck tap. So if we look at this frame bulk, you can see that it jumps off of this block and I can press my duck tap key and you can see that it now became a duck tap or I can press my auto jump key and you can see that it turned back into a jump. I can also change the strafing type. So right now it is in uh, SO3 mode, which means uh, strafe as fast as possible. I can change it to S13, which means max angle strafing. Uh, it's a little slower. Uh, you don't really want to use it, actually. In most cases, uh, SO3 is the best. And you can do S22, which means slow down. Uh, slow down doesn't turn at all. You can see this is what our frame bulk just became. Uh, because S22 doesn't turn at all, it just tries to slow down. You can see we come to a halt. So let's change it back to SO3 which means go fast. Uh, now there are two uh, very convenient commands. Uh, they are bxt test editor insert point and bxt test editor delete point. Uh, let me show what they do. So if I point my mouse somewhere and press the insert point button, you can see that it inserts a point right where I am aiming with the mouse and it kind of splits the segment into two. So now I can change this point separately from the further point. And I can add as many of these points as I want, and I can change the, the, the properties of them individually. And delete point just deletes the point under the mouse cursor. You can see that the point was deleted. So uh, this is how 
making of the tasks in the new editor looks like. You construct the route uh, using edit mode and append mode. Then as you progress further, you set run point and simulate the test. See that it works fine. Uh, now, if we take back a look into the script that we have created, you can see that it contains a bunch of uh, strafing frameworks according to the path. And uh, let's say that you went too far or that you got a desync and you want to edit a frame bulk earlier. So you want to take this command, uh, pause bxc test editor to bxt free command, and you want to put it on the frame bulk starting from which you will want to edit the test. So let's do that, save it. And important point, you want to disable the test editor before executing it, because when you execute the script while the test editor is active, it will save whatever path was edited in the editor to prevent any data loss. So if you edit the file manually, you want to disable the test editor before running the script. And if I now run the script, you will see that I started earlier. So, so now I can edit this whole segment of the path starting from an earlier point. And this point corresponds to uh, this frame block that I inserted the pause on. Uh, so this is how you create a test script uh, using the new strafe editor and you go you go like this uh, all the way throughout the map. Now uh, as I uh, if you take another look at the HLTS, you can see that enables uh, victorial strafing here at the top. Uh, victorial strafing makes strafing look uh, very smooth. Uh, the camera doesn't twitch almost at all. But unfortunately, due to the computational complexity, it drops the FPS. So uh, you can delete this line, as it says here, to get back to the usual your strafing. And uh, if I now delete all this uh, part of the test that I created and uh, run the editor again, you can see that my FPS now is now much better. Uh, it practically doesn't lag. Uh, but unfortunately, as you will see, when I uh, when I save uh, when I add some points to run the script, now my camera is moving around just in just like in the usual old tests, which didn't use vectorial strafing. Also, the length of this segment uh, that it appends in append mode can be controlled using bxt test editor append frames. This is the number of frames. So if I set it to let's say five hundred. Uh, and restart the test editor, you can see that this line will be really long, but unfortunately uh, with vectorial strafing it will drain the FPS like very heavily. And on the other hand, if you are barely using the append mode, you can set this to 1, which will, ma which will make this only one frame long. Uh, and uh, this means that you can use edit mode. For example, I just added a frame bulk, you can extend it, and you can fly around and move the camera in append mode without it hurting the FPS because it has to simulate only this one frame as you move around. So uh, this is an important quar to remember. So this is how the testing progresses. Uh, if you go to the test video that I have uploaded of uh, K-Zero member hop, uh, in the description I have linked a two-part video of the full process of making that test via the test editor. So if you are wondering how the testing looks in practice, you can go watch those uh, those Twitch watts. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will hope that you will find this test editor useful. I spend a lot of time on it. And see you next time.